Okay, so we're going to look at the top here, a ratio. So we're going to write the word ratio. That's an important word because it's a vocabulary word. A ratio is a comparison of two quantities by division. If you want to write the words out instead of writing the number two and the division sign, you can. How many people have started um, studying the vocabulary parts already? Okay, your vocabulary text is on the tent, so you still have a while if you don't know them. You have a long time. And a ratio can be written three ways. So we can write a ratio as a fraction with any numbers that you want. I'm just showing you. You can write a ratio with a colon between them. A colon are those two dots. And then you can also write a ratio with the word two in the middle. I like to use the fraction way, and I suggest that you guys probably do too, because it's easier to simplify. And to remember to simplify if it's written like a fraction. Now, you just need to know that can be written three ways, so if you see it in a different way, you know it's a ratio. So We're going to start counting drums and flutes first. Is that okay with you guys? Okay, so the directions say we're going to write each ratio in simplest form, then explain its meaning. So if we look right down here, it says flutes to drums. So how many flutes are there? Four. And how many drums? Two. Two. So how, whatever they ask for first, that's the number that's going to go on top. It says flute. So we have flutes first. What can we do to those numbers? Kaden. Two, and then we get two over one, right? I know that's against everything that your teacher has always taught you to leave the one under it, but you just leave it like that as an improper fraction instead of changing it to two because it's a ratio. Now we have to explain its meaning. That means we have to like write a sentence with it. Okay. So for every two flutes, There is one drum. That's it. Can you handle that sentence? So each time you're going to start with for every, what I'm underlining right now, the two flutes, that's what's on top. Down here, that's what's on bottom. Sometimes this is is going to change to the word are for plural purposes. Didn't think you'd use English and math, did you? Okay, now I'm going to make you hungry, and we're going to count sandwiches and milk cartons. What are they asking for first? Sandwiches. And how many sandwiches do we have? Four. One, two, three, four. Let's count our milk cartons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Who knows what we can do with that 4 and that 10? Nevea. We're going to simplify by 2. And what is our simplified ratio? Tori. 2 over 5. Does anyone think they know how to explain the meaning of that one? Hayden. Good. For every two sandwiches, there are five milk cartons. Why did we have to do sandwiches first? It told us to. And look, she even changed the is to are because it, there was more than one. So, a sentence. Starts with a capital letter, so the F on 4 should be capital. There's going to be a comma before the word there and a period at the end. I feel like you, this might have gone, you might have went over this in your last class with Mrs. Hicks. Did she talk to you about sentences? Are you doing that today? Did you not have her yet? Oh, because you are Mrs. Pitts' class. Oh my gosh, it's going to take me a long time. Hi.
Let's look down here. The, these ones are a tad bit different. They show cases, but not all. A pet store sold the animals listed in the table in one week. Write the ratio of cats to pets sold that week. Then explain its meaning. So we have to write the sentence too. How many cats are there? Eight. It says pets sold that week. What are we going to have to do? Add. What numbers are we going to have to add, Destiny? Are cats pets? Yeah, we have to add that one. Don't worry, you're not the only one. Everyone's always like, huh, do we add the number you always use? In, already used? Yeah, you have to. So we're going to add those together. And we get what? 32. 32. I'm surprised there's more birds sold than cats myself. But I'm not a bird person myself, but what can we do with 8 over 32? Cooper? Let's do 8. That way we only have to do it once, right? And we get 1 fourth. If we would have started with 4, we'd have to do it by 2 again. So the larger the number that you pick, the less work you have to do overall. So for every one cat, there are four pets sold. Just like the last one, pretty much, right? Except this time we have to find the total and add them together. They're testing your addition skills. What do you think about the new problem? You're okay with it? I know you like counting pictures better, but... This one down here, we're going to talk about Salvador and his books that he likes to read. Who thinks they can read that for us? Addie? The table shows the number of books Salvador has read. Find the right ratio of Mr. Books to explain its meaning. So how many, what did they ask for first? Mm, mystery. How many mystery books are there? Ten. And it said total. So what are we going to have to do? Do I have to add mystery in there also? Yes. So I'm going to add 10 plus 7 plus 5 plus 2. Do you guys get 24? Yeah. We're going to simplify by 2 and we're going to get 5 over 12. Who thinks they know the meaning sentence? Kaden? Let's use our simplified 5 twelfths. Good. For every five mystery books, There are 12 total. Is it okay if you don't write the same exact words as we do as we're describing it? I'll be okay with that. Just make sure you have your number with the correct label behind it. Whatever on top, whatever on top comes first. Whatever on bottom comes second. The next one is different. I'll give you a second to write that down though. Put your pencil down when you're ready to go on so I know who's working and who is not. Because if your pencil's moving, it looks like you're still working. We're good to go? Okay, this one's different. I'm going to zoom in. You might not understand it after this first one, but I want to get one in your notes. We'll practice another one, don't you worry. 
We're going to divide 33 photos into two groups. So how many groups are we doing? Two. two. And so the ratio is four to seven. So your two groups, one group has four, one group has seven. So we're going to draw four boxes to represent the group with four in it. Now your boxes don't have to be beautiful. How many boxes do you think are going to be in our second group? Seven, because it says seven there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, no matter what problem we're going to do, it's always going to be two groups. Because ratio has, you know, the top has two numbers, so it only can have two groups. These numbers were formed seven. It could change to different numbers on you, but that's just how many boxes you draw. Now, there's going to be 33 photos total. Do you see that number right there? And there's going to have to be an equal number in each box. So how many boxes total do we have right now? We have 11. So if there's 33 photos in 11 boxes, I'm going to do 33 divided by 11, and I get... So there's going to be three photos in each box. So I'm going to write three in each box. So you have to write that 11 times. And then I just have to figure out how many are in each group. So I can either do 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3, or I can do 3 times 4, which is probably easier for you guys to think about. So we get 12. So the answer for group 1 is 12. And I'm going to take 3 times 7. If you want to do 3 plus 3, it's a 7, that's fine. But 3 times 7 is? And that's my answer there. If I add those two numbers up, I should get 33. Do I get 33? Yeah. So that's our answer. We're going to do another one to practice that because it's a little bit strange, isn't it? Do you guys have any questions for this one? Okay, I want you to get your math books out and you're going to turn to page 22.